I'm being hit by every single type of emotion. Don't say anything. I'm gonna make it an ax murder free zone. I know I'm gonna die. Mm -hmm. And I don't give a damn. We're Amy and Adam, and this is Kindred Spirits Inside the Investigation. This case is Maplecroft, which is the former home of Lizzie Borden in Fall River, Massachusetts. And incidentally, it's exactly where we are right now. This place is very notorious because uh, Lizzie Borden, after she was acquitted from the trial of the death of her father and stepmother, she moved into this house with her sister and she lived out the remaining days. Deb called us in. It was interesting to get the call to come here because they want to open it up to people. However, they did not know what was going to happen here because they have not had a full-scale investigation here to uh, see what kind of activity was happening. Like, what would happen if you came in here and talked about the axe murders? It was strange because it wasn't like a normal case for us where it was this dire, you know, moment of what the heck is going on here. But we were setting the stage for everyone who investigates here from here on out. Right. I don't know that we expected the level of activity that we experienced. And I don't think anyone would just experience it in day to day. Mm -hmm. It's definitely brought on by our attempt to talk to Lizzie. We did use Chip on this case, right. and uh, it was tough because, you know, all we had to tell him was we're going to Fall River, and we thought he would know where right. he was. So poor Chip, thank goodness he trusts us. <laughs> You are in the house. All of a sudden, I'm very upset. Mm. Like agitated and upset. Come here. Like I don't like it. Just, I'm being hit by every single type of emotion. Mm. I, it, I just, I'm trying to get a grip on my emotions and I just can't. Chip is just another aspect of our investigation, you know, so we would never base an entire investigation on only Chip's findings, but we would, you know, we take it into account. And so mm -hmm. if we can correlate his findings with evidence or research, like that's amazing. Is there a death here that we know of? She was actually waked here in the front parlor. So this is where her casket would have been. Wait, right here? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> because I feel sick like I'm, I know I'm gonna die, and I don't give a damn. It's like, let it come. We tried something here where we split up and I went up into her parlor and Adam stayed down here. Basically, I was up there completely alone and I did the spirit box technique and I used the blindfold, even though no one was with me, just to further kind of the sensory deprivation aspect of it. Doing that, Adam asked the questions using the walkie. Right. You're going to have a lot of people come in here. They try to talk to you. And most of those people are going to talk about Directly. Yes. They're going to talk to you directly. I'm lost. Okay. So the people that own this house now also own the house. Don't say anything. Want to ask the question, and we know everybody watching is going to be like, ask the question. Right. But here's the tea. We knew if we did, she would stop talking to us. Shut down. We and didn't want to scare her. It was because the second we even touched on what happened at the other house, she would shut down. She would leave for the whole night. We wouldn't talk to her again until the next day, right. and we'd have to kind of coax her back out. So if we went there, we would just lose her. Like, right. I don't think she's ever gonna give anybody an answer to that question. No. I just don't, th I think she'll never bother to answer if anybody asks it here. I think the quickest way to ensure that any activity you're having is gonna stop is to just ask that question, because right. it will stop. So right now we are going through Maplecroft and we're taking out anything that pertains to the murders because we're gonna make it an ax murder free zone because Elizabeth would not have had anything like that here. Elizabeth, we're getting rid of all the horrible things that talk about what happened on 2nd Street because 
you don't need to be reminded of that. And I think it's important to, we didn't get to touch on it a lot in the episodes, it's good to talk about now how there's follow through. Like you as an investigator, you have to have follow through. It's important <laughs> that when you make a promise, you keep it. Mm -hmm. So when we said to her, we were gonna take that stuff out of the house, we needed to keep it out of the house. We're just trying to think of like the long run and mm -hmm. what you can do here to one, stop this from escalating. Because mm -hmm. if people start coming in and bringing up uncomfortable things for her, mm -hmm. the activity could start ramping up. Mm -hmm. And so you do kind of want her to remain comfortable. Exactly. So we just feel like in the long run, it's important that everybody that come here, if they're going to investigate, do so very respectfully and with the idea that this was her sanctuary and it right. still is. Mm -hmm. So. We think that the best thing to do, we have a whole box of, the, of anything in the house yeah. that had to do with the murders. We should just get it out of the house because I think that's the one thing that's uncomfortable for her here. But otherwise, it's all on the people who come in here to handle it respectfully, mm -hmm. know where her headspace is, know that Elizabeth Warden is in this house. Right. In the end, you know, we kind of communicated that to Deb and anybody else who investigated <clears throat> here, that it was just important to treat this haunting in a special kind of way because uh, this will eventually open up to be a bed and breakfast. And I think it's gonna be flooded with not only like paranormal enthusiasts, but his history buffs. And Ugh. when we were kind of digging into the history, we were wondering, you know, is there gonna be something else here that could cause a haunting? And there's not, it's just her. She does not wanna go anywhere. This was her escape. This was her sanctuary. This was what she dreamed of and uh, I don't think she has any intention of leaving and I don't think there's anything we could do to make her leave. So I think we were able to communicate that to Deb and Sue and other people who investigate here. And we're just hoping that we are setting that trend for how people handle this house from the here on out. Thanks for watching and keep up with Kindred Spirits and more behind the scenes action on Travel Channel Go.